Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present to you a little bit of information about the Arizona Technology Council. Uh, we've had a collaboration with the tech parks for uh, um, almost 10 years now. And, uh, sorry, can you hear me okay? Yes, okay. I heard an echo there. Um, I should tell you that uh, Carol Stewart, who runs the tech parks, um, is on our board of directors. Um, and uh, for those of you that remember uh, Bruce, uh, he was integral in uh, helping us set up an office in Tucson. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Bruce Wright, that is. So a little bit about history about us. Um, we're a 501c6 not-for-profit trade association. We're focused on science and technology-based companies. Uh, our business model is in fact a lot like a chamber of commerce, but while, while they may serve dry cleaners, donut shops, car washes, and restaurants, we serve technology companies. Uh, I am the president and CEO. We were established in uh, 2002 uh, as a merger between the Arizona High Tech Industry Cluster and the Arizona Software and Industry Association. Uh, in 2008, I came back to Arizona from Pittsburgh, where I ran the Pittsburgh Tech Council for about eight years, and immediately started collaborating with Bruce Wright and Justin Williams. Uh, and uh, in 2000, June of 2008, we merged AMIT, which was Aerospace Manufacturing IT Clusters of Tucson, into the council and opened our first Tucson office. So we've had an office there since 2008. And then in 2016, we merged the Arizona Optics Industry Association into the Arizona Tech Council. Its board became the Optics Valley Committee of the Tech Council. Uh, these are the sectors that we serve. Um, aerospace, aviation de and defense and semiconductor and electronics have long been significant industries in Arizona. The health and bioscience industry have been growing in Arizona over the last 15 years. Um, we have, I think, 650 uh, software companies in Arizona now. We all, also represent uh, telecom, course optics and photonics. I think we have 75 members uh, just in that space. Energy, whether it's, uh, you know, the whole spectrum of energy. Mining technology, a lot of which is in uh, Tucson. Advanced manufacturing and emerging technologies like uh, electric vehicles and wearables and autonomous vehicle, things of that sort. We also invite uh, associate members, bankers, lawyers, accountants, recruiters, investors, and uh, not-for-profits, government, and academic institutions as members of the council. Uh, I serve a board of directors. Our current board chair is Eric Miller. He's the uh, co-founder uh, and CEO of PADT, which is a Tempe, Arizona-based company. Uh, we do have an office in Tucson. For many years, we were uh, at the Tech Park, and uh, we are in downtown Tucson now, but uh, our new um, vice president of our Southern Arizona office, Carla Morales, is uh, looking at possibly moving back out to the Tech Park. We have about 750 member companies. About two-thirds of those are in uh, Phoenix. Um, a third roughly are in uh, Tucson, but we do have members uh, spattered all over the state, including uh, Douglas, Arizona and uh, Sierra Vista. These are the organizations that support the council that believe in our uh, mission. Um, premier sponsors, by example, are 55,000, Platinum are 22,000, and Visionary are 8,250. So uh, these organizations have invested in the success of the Arizona Technology Council. You'll see uh, Caterpillar, which is in Southern Arizona, is a uh, platinum sponsor. Um, one of the things that we can do for our members is uh, help promote them. Uh, all of our members are featured on our uh, website uh, through our member directory. Uh, you can also um, offer up a blog on a topical issue that you're a expert in and uh, share that with our director of marketing and communication. You can do that once a month. Uh, and we love to hear any news that's coming from our members. So if you have press releases or 
uh, exciting things happening. Um, you can share that with us and uh, we'll share it with the rest of the tech community via social media. We do an annual report. We just uh, finished the one for 2020. Uh, the uh, title is Resiliency, which uh, I think epitomizes uh, what we have all gone through over the last 14 months or so. Um, you can find the annual report on our, on our website. It's a pretty comprehensive uh, uh, description of everything we've accomplished in that year uh, including the metrics around uh, what we accomplished. Uh, we have a quarterly magazine called TechConnect. Uh, we collaborate with the Arizona Commerce Authority in putting this together. The latest issue is on artificial intelligence. Uh, the one that's coming up, which we'll publish in June, is on uh, MedTech. Uh, you can see these are the last four issues. It's an excellent publication that we've been um, putting together since 2005. Public policy is an important part of what we do. Um, you may or may not know that uh, we are the organization that created the angel investment tax credit back in 2006. In 2017, we recapitalized it. And this session of the legislature, we're working on uh, extending it for the next 10 years. It does sunset in, uh, in June, on June 30, 2021. Um, but we're in good shape to get it extended. Uh, we didn't run a bill this year because we knew the committees that would get assigned to uh, the committee chairs do not look favorably on tax credits. So instead we've been working to get it in the budget. So um, that work continues. Um, our public policy committee meets every two weeks and uh, this public policy guide, I think is roughly six, 60 pages long. It covers every policy issue you can possibly imagine in, a, in the technology realm. Again, you can find that on our website. Uh, th these are our uh, priorities for 2021. Uh, you can see right up top there is the Angel Investment Tax Credit Program. Um, we're also running an appropriations bill to appropriate uh, $3 million a year for five years to STEM. Uh, primarily focused on rural, semi-rural, and urban uh, areas. Um, we also are always working on education and have been supporting the um, fourth year of funding for, for the CTEDs. Uh, we have a number of JTEDs that are members uh, from the Tucson area. And we've been supporting legislation that protects businesses um, from liability associated with COVID-19 and the governor has in fact signed a bill uh, in that area. We have 13 standing committees. Any employee of any member can participate on any committee. Uh, we had our um, cybersecurity summit yesterday, had some of the most extraordinary speakers you can uh, imagine and uh, our cybersecurity committee was instrumental in helping us identify the topics and the speakers for that. Uh, you can see we have a variety of committees, uh, med tech, women in the workforce, IOT, the additive manufacturing, MarTech, MedTech, Optics Valley, and public policy. And again, anyone who wants to get involved in those committees uh, that are members are welcome. Uh, each committee has a chair or a co-chair who are members and a staff liaison. We go out and negotiate lower cost products and services for our members in uh, all kinds of areas. Uh, Arizona Lith 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 Lithographers is a member company and it's based in Tucson. Uh, we have a discount with them. They actually print all of our uh, collateral materials, their, their quality is extraordinary and their prices are, are very reasonable. But you can see a number of areas that um, we negotiate lower cost products and services on behalf of our members. I'm gonna talk about two that might be of interest to some of you. First is we run a multiple employer plan 401k program. So even if you have two or five or seven employees, you can offer your employees a 401k. 
we uh, take away all of the fiduciary liability, most of the paperwork, and um, just, just like any large company, you can provide a 401k, which is often necessary to attract the best and brightest talent uh, to your enterprise. Uh, currently, uh, you, we uh, work with UBS Financial Services on the sell side, and on the back end, we work with Empower it was Mass Mutual, but Mass Mutual was recently acquired by Empower. So uh, if you need to provide a 401k to your employees, you can do it through the Tech Council. We also provide um, a health bundle uh, with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona. Again, we've gone out and negotiated a much lower price than you would be able to get if you went directly to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona. We can provide medical, dental, vision, life, disability, HSA, FSA, COBRA, the whole nine yards. So um, if, you're, if you're in need of uh, healthcare, in this case, you have to have at least two employees. And the pricing that we have is best if you're from two to 50. So um, all of you should fit in that category. And uh, program is um, uh, in its second year and uh, it doubled in size uh, in 2021. Lots of information on our website about um, both the 401k program and the association health plan. Uh, prior to COVID, we did 160 events a year face to face. Uh, I think in 2020, we probably did about 85 virtual events. Uh, our cybersecurity summit hopefully will be our last major signature event um, uh, virtually. Uh, we're going to start doing face-to-face -face events uh, in June. You see we have a number of um, different speaker series, the tech uh, sector speaker series, uh, after five uh, networking events, which are monthly. After our board meetings, we do a quarterly VIP, um, which allows our members at large to meet with the board. Uh, we have the Women in the Workforce quarterly events in Tucson and our Tech Inclusion Forum in Phoenix. These are the major conferences that we have scheduled for the rest of the year. Our MedTech conference is coming up in June live, Aerospace Aviation Defense and Manufacturing in July, CEO Leadership Retreat in August, Smart City and IoT Conference in September. Uh, our biggest event in, in uh, Southern Arizona is the Southern Arizona Tech and Business Expo. It's a huge event. Um, we've, it will be uh, again live at the convention center. Uh, the last couple of years, we've actually sold out um, all the expo booths and, um, and uh, had almost 500 attendees. In November, we'll have the Governor's Celebration of Innovation and the Marketing Tech Summit. Uh, we have another cyber event in December and uh, a Tech the Halls holiday mixer in December as well. And then these are some of the virtual events that uh, we will continue to run. Uh, again, our signature events, the big conferences and expos and summits and so on will all be live going forward. But we're gonna maintain some virtual events going forward. Uh, it will make it easier for some to uh, attend. You see our uh, the global 5G rollout race and emerging Arizona 5G technologies is coming up in as a Tucson Tech Talk on May 5. Um, so all of these events you can find on our website. They're in chronological order. If you go to the homepage, it says events, pull it down and you can uh, just look at the Tucson events, uh, which makes it easy for you. Uh, we have a couple of podcasts. Um, this is our second year of AZ TechCast. Um, it's on... Um, topical technology issues. Uh, we usually have at least three guests. And uh, so if any of you are interested in being on uh, the uh, tech cast because you're a, uh, a subject matter expert in a technology area, uh, please let us know. It is a live broadcast on Business Radio X and archived on the Tech Council's uh, website. Uh, we also work with a Tucson company called uh, Michael Beach Consulting to do our Tech Focus um, podcast. Uh, these are focused on a tech leader. 
many uh, tech leaders across Tucson and Phoenix have been uh, showcased on, on Tech Focus Tech Podcast. And uh, again, if you're interested in participating in this, just talk to uh, one of the staff members and I'll tell you who they are at the end of this. Um, we have a community calendar. We find that many of our members uh, like to do their own events and uh, like to promote them to other technology companies across the state. And so we created a community calendar. Um, you go to uh, the homepage, you go to events, it says submit an event, a form comes down, you fill out the information uh, and any events going on at the tech park uh, should be up there as well. So. Um, uh, take a look at that if you've got an event of your own coming up. Uh, some of you may not know that the Arizona Tech Council also has a foundation. It's currently doing business as the SciTech Institute. Um, we just finished our 10th year of the Arizona SciTech Festival. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people participate in the festival across the state. Uh, Pre-COVID, um, we had 80 of 90 cities in Arizona that participated. Uh, we also created a program called Chief Science Officers. Um, 130 school districts in Arizona uh, participate. They run an election from in grades six through 12 to elect a chief science officer. We teach them leadership skills. Uh, they run uh, initiatives and programs in their school. Uh, they collaborate. Uh, in what we call CSO cabinets. The program has been so successful that uh, we are now in nine other states and four other countries, uh, including Mexico. Uh, hugely successful program. We also run the middle school and high school science bowls, which are sanctioned by the US Department of Energy. And we support um, uh, what's called the counting bee. It's sort of the equivalent of the spelling bee, uh, but it's math. So a lot of focus on developing the next generation of STEM leaders uh, on behalf of our members. Uh, we use all the ma major platforms, social media platforms to uh, promote uh, our programming and our members and your news. And uh, so again, please make sure if there's anything cool going on in your company that we know about it. This is the team. Um, it's a lean but mighty team, and uh, we have two employees in uh, Tucson. Uh, Carla, Carla Morales is our new uh, vice president of our Southern Arizona Regional Office. Um, uh, Jamie Nielsen has been with us for a number of years, director of operations and events for Southern Arizona. Uh, again, we're currently housed downtown, although we're all still working from home. Uh, and again, maybe moving back out to the to the tech park. So I think that's it. These are the two contacts. If you want to know anything about your membership um, benefits and I'd be happy to answer.